Welcome to EXP's Express Notes on paper entitled Foundations in Financial Management. When you've had a chance to read the introductory pages to these Express Notes, let's get started on the first topic, which is about the uh, cash receipts and payments in a business. Now, cash, of course, is, is quite central um, to, to the operations of a company. We can see the uh, cash amount that a company has at a certain point in time by looking at its uh, financial statements among the assets. And there's also a specialized, uh, in the annual report in the financial statements, there's a specialized report called the cash flow statement, which gives us a feel for the amount and movement of cash and type of cash flows occurring over a period of time. These are necessary ingredients in order to understand um, the health of the business and its prospects with regard to being able to meet its obligations. Now the uh, cash uh, payments and, and receipts, they take a number of different forms. You have operating cash, which is cash received from selling things to customers, and also cash that has to be paid out to suppliers and of course to employees, and also for various uh, incidentals that keep the business uh, running, such as rent and heat and telephone bills and so on. Then, of course, there's cash that uh, has to be paid on interest payments for, for loans. In fact, we have here financing in, in two places. We have financing mentioned cash flows that are connected with raising, that means uh, uh, financing the business, raising long-term finance. That can take the form of um, issuing shares or bonds. Debentures are a type of bond in order to raise cash for the business for investment purposes. The cash then therefore can be used to purchase non-current assets. By this we understand uh, equipment, for example, automobiles or software, anything necessary for the business to be able to generate um, uh, uh, profits or, or um, a returns over the long term. So. The investments it makes in non-current assets uh, are items that one can, uh, are either of a tangible nature or an intangible nature and can be viewed also among the assets on the balance sheet. Of course, there's also taxation considerations that have to be taken into account. And uh, all of this uh, adds up to tracking the movement of cash through the business. So this cash flow accounting is a is almost a parallel system of looking at the cash incomes and the cash uh, outflows from the business, which is uh, quite distinct from the financial accounting of income and expenditures, which works on the accruals basis, and therefore, uh, uh, is, and, and which in turn is based on the matching principle in financial accounting. Now, the accruals uh, uh, basis is a, is a, a principle are very important from the standpoint of being able to present uh, financial statements in a, in a way which is deemed to be accurate and reflective of the true state of the business, but it tends to uh, conceal a bit where the cash uh, is going to and coming from, and that's why cash flow accounting is an important parallel system. Of course, we understand that the importance of cash flow management, um, as we said before, uh, company depends crucially on being able to uh, pay its bills on time, and that is, is really quite critical. Therefore, there is a series of cash management functions that are within the uh, domain of the uh, treasurer, um, which involve uh, planning cash movements and, of course, the budgeting that goes along with that. So cash budgeting is an important area in its own right based on making uh, budgets and forecasts for the business in terms of expected cash inflows and cash outflows. What we show here, for example, is, a, um, is, is merely a format, an example of the way in which cash forecasting can take place. One sees here on the left side the cash budget uh, specifies the receipts and the nature of the receipts. If sales are being made on a cash basis, then we can specify when the cash is going to be received. And at the same time, if sales are made on a credit basis, those cash amounts would also be received, but perhaps later along this timeline here. We show a six-month uh, cash budget here, but of course this can be extended 
until the end of the year and even beyond if the company decides it wants to do its cash planning over a longer period of time. But generally up to one year would be considered a short-term cash flow forecast. Now we can see here that almost everything is anticipated. If equipment is sold for scrap value, equipment disposal, this is capturing the cash that comes into the business. We also have a series of payments that have to go out of the business. And you can see here quite a laundry list of all the typical items that a business has to spend on in order to maintain itself. The important thing is to be able to calculate what the net cash movement is on a month by month basis. So we have the cash inflows, the cash outflows, and the net cash movement for the month. And if you recall the uh, cash balance we spoke about at the very beginning of this session, well, we would carry a cash balance here and add to it if there was a net inflow of cash or subtract from from this if there was a net outflow of cash. So we can always maintain uh, or anticipate what the cash balance will be at the end of each month. Now, to complete such a table, we need to have a number of example of uh, assumptions that need to be formed. Here are examples of the sorts of assumptions that would back up um, our cash budget. For example, it's useful to know what the selling price is going to be for the product uh, sold on credit. There may be a discount, for example, for cash sales and what the selling price will be for cash uh, which is sold for products which are sold on credit or on cash. Remember, payment terms are often given to credit customers, and we need to know how many days credit terms have been provided because that will influence the timing or the delay between the sale and the receipt of cash. By the same token, we also have to make uh, assumptions regarding the payment of materials, costs, labor costs, overheads, and so on, and also fixed costs that will be occasioned by making investments in, uh, in uh, equipment and so on. Also other costs which occur on a periodic basis. Having done that, then we're in a position to be able to uh, fill in the numbers and be able to uh, calculate whether or not we have sufficient cash balances at all points in time or whether we need to borrow in order to supplement our available cash, in which case we need to make a further assumption as to what the interest rate will be for such borrowings because the interest has also got to be included in the cash flow forecast. Uh, loan interest has to be paid on a periodic basis and that is a cash uh, outflow. Next we have um, to just take into account the sensitivity of the variables that we have um, about which we've made assumptions. Um, budgeting as anybody who's experienced in the field knows is not a precise science and it's rare that the actual business um, evolution follows precisely what's in the budget. The budget is, is merely an attempt to try to say under certain given assumptions what the flows what the cash flows could look like and what the action steps have to be if the cash receipts are slower than the cash outflows, in which case some kind of borrowing has to take place. So it is usual, having set up a base case budget for cash, that we can start to stress test it and check the sensitivity of um, the various variables that go into it to see what happens if there is a delay uh, in certain cash items and what kind of uh, financing gap is this going to um, impose on us. So cash budgeting is an important and uh, uh, a critical um, discipline that has to be uh, refined within the company.